And now, here's your host of Shaping Success, Wes Tankersley. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Shaping Success. I'm your host, Wes Tankersley. I've got a really special guest with me here today, but if you can do me a favor before we get started, if you are watching this on Facebook Live, please do a watch party. Help me get this out. Like, share, and review it on Apple Podcasts or anywhere you're listening to it. Help me to grow the show. Today, we have a special guest. His name is Jake Rose. I remember the first time that I was listening to Rich Kids. I was rolling in, down in Boise, Idaho over by the Edwards Theater. If you're local, you know what I'm talking about. I heard Rich Kids on the X and I was like, what the hell is this? This is an awesome song. And uh, I started listening to the words and that's what I really like about Jake's music is that it has a lot to do with his life. So, hey Jake, thanks for taking time to be on the show and uh, it's great to have you here. Awesome, thanks for having me Wes, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, so Jake's got a pretty long story. It's, well, it's kind of long short, right? So he's the lead singer of yeah. New Medicine and then also now he's got this country singer songwriter career going on. Jake, can you tell us just a little bit about you know, kind of where you grew up, a little bit of your background and, and what you got going on. Yeah, man. I, I grew up in uh, Hamill, Minnesota, which is about 30 minutes outside of the Twin Cities and uh, grew up on a farm. We farmed, uh, you know, corn, soybeans. And then my dad ended up getting into farming pumpkins. And uh, I grew up, my uncle and my dad had a band called Stampede. And they're like a southern rock band that played Leonard Smith, Charlie Daniels, all this, you know, kind of southern rock eagles you know just all that kind of music and so i grew up around music at a very very young age and and i grew up uh riding around in the tractor and all we listened to was country or rock and roll and so i just kind of grew up with that classic rock and country in my bones and uh when i was about 13 or 14 i really started writing my own songs i already at that age and i picked up guitar i started on drums but i picked up guitar and uh i knew i wanted to start a band like my dad and so I had a band in high school, and then towards the end of high school, I was getting really serious about it. Uh, I befriended a guy in, in in class named Dan, and we started a band. At the time, it was called A Verse Unsung, and then we ended up getting a record deal, and we changed our name to New Medicine, and uh, we got signed to uh, Atlantic Records and Photo Finish Records um, in 2009, and we toured with uh, you know tons of bands of the rock bands of the time disturbed avenge sevenfold we did a lot of tours with them papa roach uh puddle of mud rob zombie marilyn manson uh hollywood undead chevelle uh, incubus i mean there's just the list goes on it's hailstorm our really good friends um and uh anyways i the band uh we put out our first record in 2010 on the label and we had a couple of hits on the radio and then um, we signed another deal in 2014, I think it was, or 13 with Imagine Records and we did an album with them and that was Morgan Rose from Seven Dust and another guy, Bob, who started this label. And uh, anyways, we ended up going on hiatus after about a year after that record came out um, just because it just... Yeah, we toured in a van for so long and we felt like we hit a wall or something. And I think we all just kind of were, um, I don't know, we just life. And I had been writing country songs the whole time. I always would turn songs into the record label. They would say, man, that kind of sounds like a country song. And I'd be confused, like, really? I don't know, it just sounds like something I wrote about my life or whatever. But the way I was, you know, writing it was becoming country. And and uh, during while I was still in New Medicine, I wrote a song for Colt Ford called Crank It Up. And I just thought it was really fun. And, and uh, he, he kind of breaks the mold on artists. He's like a country rapper. And so I'm like a, you know, rock guy that started in country and Southern rock. I don't know. So I, I have a little bit of everything in me too. So I like that about him. And, you know, during that time when we were in my, in, in new medicine, it was like, I felt like rock was going even heavier and I was more of like a storyteller. And then I felt like country was becoming what uh, this whole other animal florida georgia line comes out with and jason aldean's playing drop c tuning and rocking out and he's playing stadiums and i think and like okay well i need to do things and so um anyways after the band went on hiatus i started writing full time for just um i got a publishing deal just writing songs and i knew i wanted to do a new project and i started writing these songs and i really was just writing about my life and it kind of turned into this solo project the uh, jake rose stuff so and that's what i really like about your music and i you know, 
I had mentioned earlier that I had listened to that Hook podcast that you were on recently, and you talked a little bit about, I've always had this feeling about the music that you put out, because when you put sleeves out, I was so excited to see that, you know, I knew No Medicine was on hiatus, I knew you weren't putting out music, and I was just listening to the New Medicine songs, you always got this feeling that you were talking about your life, you were talking about the things that you were going through, um, you know, and that was what was so crazy about Rich Kids to me, is because there's lots of people who sit there and they talk about music, and how... They just listen to it. And yeah, Rich Kids has got this awesome, you know, like hook and you can listen to it, just the music and it's still cool. But when you start listening to the words and the way that you're talking about the things that you do, it's really moving because there's people who go through that kind of stuff. And, you know, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, some of the words in Rich Kids and, and why you wrote it the way that you did? Because it, it relates to your life, right? Absolutely. So actually, which the funny story about Rich Kids was, the guy that I wrote it with, Kevin Kadish, um, he's written a bunch of hits now, uh, all about that bass. He wrote Whiskey Glasses for Morgan Wallen. He's, uh, but he's ended up, he was a big part of New Medicine and helping me be a writer. And I'm actually signed to a, his publishing company now through Sony. And we work together. We produce my records together. He's uh, my partner and all this stuff. But he really, when the first, we wrote, we wrote one song called Like a for it right after we wrote it and then the next week i came in there to write again I'm like what should we write and i i don't know i think i brought in some random riffs and stuff and he said well what what do you want to say and i was like i don't know and i was so young and i just was like i'm not sure i don't know and he said well tell me about your life you know and i'm like well man i grew up around all these rich kids in in minnesota because i did i i was like I, I was on the edge of the cities and, and I was like, my house was like a couple miles into the country, but the closest school was with all these kids that went to the city and we were in the suburbs right outside, you know, Minneapolis. And it was a very wealthy part of town. And so I just ended up going to school with all those kids. And, and it was like, you know, I just, it's not that I resented them. It's like, I just used it as motivation of like, man, they got all this stuff given to them. I'm gonna have to earn it. And so like, anyways, I threw, we, he said, we should write that like, rich kids and like, you know, you didn't get any hand, anything handed to you, but here you are still, you're in Nashville writing songs and doing your band and all that stuff. And so that's kind of how that song was born. Like I didn't go to college, you know what I mean? Like I, that's a true story. I put that in the first verse cause I was like, I could have, I got, I had, I was a smart guy. I got good grades, but I, I couldn't afford it. And I wanted to do my band anyways. And so it was kind of like, no matter what your circumstances are, when you grow up, you can still kind of rise above all that. And so that's, that's the bigger message of the song. But, you know, of course, there's some people that just take it as you're talking crap about rich kids. And that's fine. It's fine, too. You know what I mean? Like, take whatever interpretation you want. But for me, it was just about, hey, just because I didn't come from money doesn't mean I ain't going somewhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the crazy thing is that, that that's what really, like, for me, kind of moved me about it is, you know, I graduated from high school and I'm sitting there and I'm working in manual labor you know, for 11 years, I changed tires and knew that right. I couldn't really afford to go to school and I couldn't afford to go to college, but then I was still making it. I was still successful. I was still making money. And, you know, that's kind of what this podcast is about is like success is different to other people. It doesn't matter. You know, it does. It's not always money. It's about what you do with yourself and if you're doing what you love. And exactly. I just love the yep. fact that you were able to figure that out. Did you do anything mm -hmm. other than like in high school, did you do any extracurricular activities or were you just basically, this is the band and I got a farm because I grew up with a, I grew up out in the country too, but we had a, I did, we didn't have a farm, but we had a lot of farming friends who either they had to work on the farm and go to school or they could play some sports, but they could only play like one or two and, and they just didn't do any of those activities because they were so busy making sure that the farm, farm was running smoothly. Was that something you had to deal with or what else did you do besides sing? Yeah, for sure. That's definitely something I dealt with. And it was also just because of financially and my parents, you know, they did everything they could. They had three kids. And so they did everything they could to get us all in a, in sports and all that stuff. But they would just, the bottom line was like, Hey, listen, you can't play every sport. So pick one. And you know what I mean? And it was like, you want to play guitar and, and have a band. Well, then you're going to have to get a job and save up, for, save up money. You better bail some more pay and save your money up and buy your, buy your guitar. You know what I mean? It was never, you know, I could just do whatever I wanted. I had to work for whatever, whatever I wanted to do. But I, I played football and I, I wrestled. And I was good at wrestling. I was on the varsity team when I was in seventh grade. But um, I, as soon as music really caught the bug for me when I was about 13 or 14, and I really only wanted to be doing that after school. And then, yes, working on the farm is not like an option. It's just, it's just like, <laughs> right. 
it's it's expected. It was just like every day after school, I would work with my dad and like for a few hours until dinner or whatever, and then maybe I'd go play guitar at night and 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 we'd have band practice almost every night, me and my friends. And, but I, I I've always loved sports and stuff too. But I just really when I was at a young age, I I knew then I that's all I wanted to do was was music. And then you talk a little bit about one of the things that I think is really cool about this story is you talked about your dad being a, being a musician as well, but he kind of didn't really. He played like Southern rock and, and some country and things like that, but you kind of went this other way because new medicine's not really like Southern rock, right? I mean, it's like, no, it's, definitely it's not, not, definitely not quite not. metal, but it's pretty hard rock. I mean, is what I would say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's like on, it's like uh rock on steroids or something like, right. but not quite metal. It's still like, it's not, you know what I mean? It's just it's this different thing. And, and uh yeah, I mean, I started there. So for me, it was just like the meter was just like, okay. I love Led Zeppelin and stuff, but what's beyond that? And then I discovered Nirvana. I'm like, ooh, now we're talking. Now Foo Fighters and, you know, and then I started heavier music and whatever. And I always listened to hip hop. Like Eminem was always a huge influence or Dr. Dre or I don't know, all the rappers back then, you know, you know. And uh, so just combining all those things into one thing for me, I never wanted to sound like, oh, I just want to chase what's on the radio. Like, uh, you know. Three Days Grace, they're still a great band, but I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to sound like them. I want to sound like me. And uh, and what I sound like is kind of like a little mix of hip hop, a little mix of, you know, old school rock, and a little mix of harder rock, and and you put all that together, and that's kind of what new medicine is, you know. Would you say that you kind of went that direction because you were kind of trying to, I don't know, rebel against what your dad was doing, or did you just was it just oh, yeah. something different? Definitely, want, I've always wanted to rebel and push it a little bit and make people kind of go, wait, did he just say that? Or <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, play a song. You know what I mean? I just, I always kind of wanted to push people's buttons a little bit and rebel and uh, stand out. You know what I mean? And uh, I didn't, I never wanted to, I was never super into doing what everybody else was doing. If it was like the teacher said, do this, I'm like, I found a different way to do it. But I, I got the same thing. But you know what I mean? I got, I still got to where we needed to get to, but I went my own way. And that's kind of how I've navigated through the music industry. But for sure, I had some like, you know, I don't want to do what my dad's doing. I already did that. I was I did that when I was fourteen. I <laughs> mean, right. And then as life has gone on, I'm more like, oh, well, I, I see the beauty in, in in all of it. You know. Well, we throw out this word here a lot on this show. It's you know, entrepreneur, and that's really basically what you are. I mean, you started out knowing that you weren't going to. You know, you weren't going to go play sports. You weren't going to college. You kind of had this idea of what you wanted to do and you had the eye on the prize. Can you talk a little bit about how, so now you have a band, but you don't have a record deal and how you got that. What did it take? You know, you're in high school, you finished high school or whatever. You had to go out tour. What was the process of getting that record deal? What were you doing? I'm sure you, you sang at a lot of places for free. You were just trying to get your name out there. Can you talk a little bit about everything that you did to get that? Yeah, man. Um... I always say the biggest thing, you know, biggest keys to my success in my life, and I'm not saying I'm the biggest rock star in the world, but I've done well for myself in in the business, and uh, I've navigated through it for a lot of years, which is, uh, a, you know, a crazy journey. But, um, yeah, so how we got signed and all that, I mean, 2008 or so, I remember the first couple of labels started, like, we were playing shows down in Minneapolis all the time. And, and I remember a couple scouts from Atlantic came to see us or something. And um, I guess the biggest thing that really, I think, pushed us in front of people was we never stopped creating and keeping like, we always were playing shows. We were at every arena show that was downtown. We would hand out flyers at the end of the show. We'd hand out demos. Um, I was constantly sending it off to people. I was always trying to book the next show. And I was always booking more recording time and I had side jobs on paying, you know, I'm, I was working at, for my dad. I was working at a bank part time. I was like doing all these different side jobs, hustles just to pay to get recording time. And I was always writing new songs and they were getting better and better and better. And I think that determination and the persistence is really what kept us going. And, and then I think we must have just struck a chord with some people in Minneapolis while our shows were starting to be three, 400 people. And we were just nonstop, you know, like we didn't give up and we just kept going. It was like, we didn't just put one EP out and then go, okay, let's see if we get a record. We were like, no, we'll just do another one. And after that, 
And then we started doing these DIY tours. I remember the first tour we did was with this band called um, Secret Lives of the Freemasons, and they were on uh, Victory Records. And man, I think we got paid a hundred bucks a show. And then some nights they didn't pay us. And I, I after high school, I told my mom and dad like I got into some call. I, I think I got into some community college or something. They're like, well, you just go and get your, you know, I'm like you know, I I I think it's a waste of money. I already know what I want to do. This is what I want to do. And I think that first year after high school, they were probably thinking, oh boy, you know, he's going off in a van. He's getting paid a hundred dollars a show. He thinks he's going to be a rock star. This is just, uh, he's going to this. I don't know what he's going to do for the rest of his life, but it wasn't long after. So I, I left in about, I think October and we did like a, almost a three month tour with this band and in the van. And we were literally sleeping in the van and Walmart parking lots. And like I said, some nights we just wouldn't get paid. We would just sell merch to get gas money and we had to call home a few times to our parents and say hey can you send us a hundred bucks to get a hotel room tonight we haven't showered in a week and i mean it was like that's what how it started but we never gave up and then and it was like a, about a year after that we had written some new songs and i think we had we had played at south by southwest and we had an attorney at that time someone in minneapolis introduced i'm gonna get all these record labels to come see you in south by southwest and this is like spring of 08 and I thought, oh, we're getting, a, we're going to get a record deal. And Interscope was saying, don't, don't play the show because we don't want any other labels to see you guys. We're going to sign you guys. Well, that guy never signed us. He didn't even, he didn't even show up to the show. And, and a bunch of labels did come and everyone thought we were young and not quite there. And then fast forward a little bit, <clears throat> someone gave us the opportunity to go on tour with, well, actually I would back that up a little bit. After that, we just. We went back in and we just wanted to record more stuff and and uh, i wrote this song called baby's gone that ended up being on the first new medicine record but um a lot of people were like well that's a that's a that's a crossover smash and at the time shine down was like still on the radio on mainstream radio I'm, i mean on like you know top 40. so rock on the radio was still a thing it's not really anymore a thing but um anyways i wrote that song and then a bunch of them us up after that and they you know actually atlantic was one of them and so they flew us to new york city we go play all of our songs in the in a, in a super sterile environment you just go to a, a a rehearsal space and four people show up and they say play your songs and then you play and then they walk out and then you don't know if you got a deal or not it's, it's very <laughs> it's like shark tank or something but so we did one of those and then we find out eh, they passed we're like ah oh, man screw them and uh so we were like, whatever, just get back to work. And then like a week later, it was like, okay, Epic Records is calling you. They want you to, they want to sign you. Okay, we're going to fly you back to New York City. You're going to play again, but these guys are going to sign you. And that was actually Allison Hagendorf. And she's at, she's the head of Rock Spotify now. But um, she was working at Epic. And I think at the time, so she, we went out to dinner. We played the show. It went great. And then like a week later, like we're going to give you a deal. And then like a week later, ever got fired. They brought a whole new team in, and she was gone, and so we had no one there. And and I swear, man, it's like then we went again for Universal. Motown wanted to sign us. Universal Motown Records. We went and played for them. They didn't sign us. I mean, we got we went out we went out to New York. I swear, in like two months, we went out there five times, and it was like I think every single major label, and they all passed on us. And I thought man like this sucks like they're just they don't see it i don't know what the heck is going on here but they don't see it so then right after all that that's a whole summer of that we get invited to go on tour with candle blocks who's like a 90s band you know they have a bunch of hits and i'm like awesome this is a great opportunity we were like the first band on so we're on at like six o'clock seven o'clock but it wasn't like it was in the middle of that tour and we had just released a new ep or whatever i don't know we were playing shows and we went on that tour and we were we were getting really good live as a band and we had some now and then this label this guy this is about a year after the first thing we did with atlantic and about a year later a guy was like hey i'm at photo finish records where we have a a label through uh atlantic records and uh if you want can we, can we come out to a show and i'm like thinking atlantic records again really you guys already passed on us and he's like no no it's like a whole new team there and we love your stuff and really love the new stuff you're doing and we're going to come to the show in New York city. And, and so we play the show and, and I remember there was a couple other record labels there too. I remember wind up there and, and Roadrunner and, and, 
they just were like waving me over after the show like come over and they're like we're giving you a deal dude we love your stuff we you guys are awesome you kick ass live and and that's how we got the deal but it wasn't it was after about six or seven trips to new york and every single time was a no and we just we stayed persistent you know? and that's got to be a testament to why you got where you are because i mean so easily could have you had just been like two or three times into that and go hey no this is it it's not gonna work what what kept you driving i mean was there any doubt halfway through that was it just kind of like hey we're just going to keep doing this because this is what we know what to do were you looking at that failure i mean because it is really a failure right you didn't get signed mm -hmm. and you're trying to do what you're trying to do you just kept pushing through it was there any ever a doubt like hey i'm just going to go back and i'm going to go farming or was it just like full steam ahead we're going to keep going and we're going to make this happen for me it was just that I, i've always had that belief and i still do now um because it's a it's a business of rejection and it's not you know it's not always it's not a talent competi competition you know what i mean like there's so many talented people but so many people quit so easily you know what i mean it's like they get someone says nah you're not good enough and then if you listen to them and you never try again well then that's what's going to happen you know and uh for me i've just had this uh internal belief in myself i was to be doing this and so if people aren't seeing it right now they're just they're gonna see it eventually you know what i mean and I'm going to convince them somehow, and it's going to be by persistence and hard work. And so whatever I lack in talent or whatever like that, I try to make up for in hard work. And over the years, those both of those things have grown. I've always been really hardworking. But now, you know, being working in the business this long, I've, I've definitely my skill set has, has, has grown. But I've always had that belief, and, and I've always believed in, like, not giving up because once you give up, then that's it. You know I mean? I'm, and I'm stubborn, so I'm just I'm still here. That's a good trait to have though, because you'll, you'll never get what you, you never get what you want if you're not stubborn about it. I mean, right. It's, it's funny listening to people talk about how easy, you know, how they, how they expect it to be so easy. Well, so-and-so got this and so-and-so got that. And that's what I like about your story. It's like people, people can easily from the outside go, oh, well, he's just a country singer. He's got a rock band. He, he just knew someone and he got there. But in reality, that story just talks about how hard it was to make it happen and how you have to be persistent. And if you're not, then it's, you know, you're essentially giving up. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I try to tell young people in town that I always ask you get where you're doing and all that stuff. And I'm like, I just didn't quit. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's, and it's been tough. You know what I mean? Like I remember we got dropped from Atlantic after our first record. We had some success on that record. And I thought, no, we're not done yet. Like we're going to get another deal. And I went back to painting houses on the side. And I just had a record deal. I just had songs on the radio. I was just on tour with Avenged Sevenfold. I was just on the top of the world a year ago. And then all of a sudden, the, the regime changed again at Atlantic. And it was new people. And our guys left. And they're dropping you. And I'm like, holy crap, here we go again. But, dude, I, I did what I had to do and uh, to stay in it. You know what I mean? I was moved to Nashville to make sure I was here to keep writing songs. And I was working side jobs and then writing when I could. And, and I think that's a big testament to why I'm still doing it, you know, was I just never quit. You know, New Medicine, it kind of took a hiatus, right? And then you went into kind of mm -hmm. this, this kind of country type thing. Kind of talk about that transition, what happened with the hiatus and why you ended up, you know, you said you were in Nashville already. I'm assuming you're already writing songs because you've written for a, a bunch of people. You know, you were talking about Colt Ford. I've heard you written for Kid Rock, a couple other people like that. Were you always writing for other people as well, or did it just kind of transition while you're on a hiatus as it was something that you could do in between? Well, yeah, I guess I was always writing. Once I figured out when I moved, when I first came to Nashville, it was like um, I, I realized that so many songs are co-written. And I thought, wow, so you can write songs with other people and you can write songs for other people and you can make a living doing that. And uh, the first, one of the first songs I wrote with Kevin was for New Medicine, Like Rose. Meatloaf cut that song. That was in 2009. And I ended up going to LA and I sang on the record with him and Jack Black, the actor. It was me and Meatloaf and Jack Black on that song. And that was the first time. And that song still, I still make money on that song, which is really cool. Um, and, uh, but it's just cool to hear someone else take a version of your song too. I think it's really fun. And it's fun to sometimes get into another artist's head and try to think, oh, I wonder what they would say. But um, I've always loved writing songs, period. And I love telling stories and stuff. And so I think in the about halfway through the first record, I was 
just starting to write a ton of different stuff because I just loved writing. I just wanted to keep writing. And a lot of stuff was sounding kind of country because I was just kind of influenced by how I grew up. And when I was down here in Nashville, I just started seeing country everywhere and these songwriters and these amazing bears and stuff. And there's banjos and there's mandolin and I'm just kind of picking stuff up and loving the way it sounds and stuff. And, and so that's kind of how I kind of got the bug for it. But in about 2000, I'm trying to remember when I wrote Crank It Up, probably 2012 or something like that. I wrote Crank It Up for Colt Ford. And that was like the first kind of, well, I was really trying to write something country specifically and for somebody. And uh, and then he cut it and it was kind of like a, a hit for him. And it was a top, it was a number one rap album actually on <laughs> Billboard. And it was it, it was actually really successful. And that was really cool for me to watch that. But um, after the band, the band took a hiatus uh, like 2015, 2014, 2015, I think it was. And um, just years of touring, man, and, and years of living in a van. And, I, you know, I loved it for so long, but it just, it, it was a grind and a grind and a grind. And I felt like the industry wasn't embracing my band. All these bands we open up for ask us to open up for them, but nobody ever paid us very well. And it was like, we were barely making any money. And it's not all about money, but you can only live in a van for so long. And, and, uh, and I just was like, man, I just want to try something different. And, and, I, and we were button heads a little bit. And it was just like, I felt we signed all these deals and we signed everything away as if, oh, you guys will make a lot of money if you guys are the biggest band in the world of all time. But if not, you got a manager, you got an agent, you got a lawyer, you got a record label, you got merch people, you got all these bills and taxes and all this stuff. And you start being like, what, man, we're, we're out here busting our butts and everyone else is taking all of our money. And for the art and stuff that we did. And it just, you know, I just wanted to restart. And so the band took a hiatus. I was ready to just kind of take a break from all that, you know? And uh, that's when I really started. Kevin, my publisher ended up saying, hey man, you should you should come back to Nashville. I was in LA for a little bit. And uh, I just kind of like went out there, chilled for like six, eight months. I was just trying to figure out what I was gonna do. And I was working in, working on songs, but I didn't know what. And then Kevin said, you should move back to Nashville and let's write some songs and let's do a record together. Whatever you want to do, solo, rock, country, whatever. And I just started writing songs. And then, and then I wrote a couple of songs that he said, man, that sounds like a country song, dude. That sounds like a hit. And I thought, really? Okay. And he signed me to a publishing deal. So now I had a, a steady income all of a sudden. So now I could just forget about doing anything else on the side because if New Medicine wasn't touring, I wasn't making money. You know what I mean? Like, because everyone was taking all of our money everywhere, and it's like, if we weren't playing shows or selling merch, we weren't making any money. So I'd go come home and paint houses after I just played an arena. But now, when I got this publishing deal, that's when I first really had no other income besides music. It was like, all right, cool. I don't have to have side jobs now, and that really motivated me to just get better and better and better at songwriting. And that's when I really started working on these songs, and it wasn't super long into it i wrote sleeves and uh that kind of op started to open up all these doors and these things in my head of like wow i'm really writing these this is just my life on a page and i felt like it sounded like me you know yeah and the story behind that is just great i i love that you know like i have a few tattoos i obviously don't have sleeves but when you were talking about all the stuff that you were talking about you know, as, as the person who's listening, you kind of like, is, is this really the true story? And it's, it's really cool to listen that, you know, this is why I have this. And this is why I have that. Because I think that a lot of times with tattoos, anyone just goes and throws them on there and there's no meaning behind them. Every single one yeah. I have has a reason of why I have it. And it was just cool to hear your story and that you can carry that with you everywhere you go. And, and people are using that as a conversation piece. Um, absolutely. Yeah. I wrote that with my friend Craig Wiseman and uh, right that day he's a huge writer and I just knew I had to bring in some kind of good idea and I I don't know if it was a good idea or not but I, I had a different title for it it was like something about the ink on my arms tell my story or something like that that was like my general concept and then he's like what do you mean and I said well this is my sister's name everyone thinks it's my ex-girlfriend because it says Jocelyn Rose on my arm and I have all these roses and, I, and it's like, well, you got all the roses for, man. And was that your ex-girlfriend? And I'm like, no, that's my sister. She died. And I was like, oh. And so I just wanted to write a song that told the story. It's like, people think I'm just like, I just got out of jail and I put my ex-girlfriend's <laughs> name on my arm or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, no, man, I got him off for a reason. And so we just told my story in that song, Sleeves. And 
it connected with so many people and it connected with people that don't have tattoos, which is crazy because they just think, wow, now I kind of understand why people would do that. You know what I mean? Well, and you talk about like, you know, the roses and that's for your sister. And that's why I, I didn't realize I'm going to be honest, like until the last two days that your last name is not Rose. It's, it's sheer, yeah, right? It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and so roses in memory of your sister, correct? Yeah, and it's it's like a family name. So um, my aunt actually, when she was eighteen, my dad uh, has ten kids in his family, and his sister was like eighteen. And she got in a motorcycle accident, but her name was um, Carol Rose, and then my sister's name was Jocelyn Rose, and my niece's name is Beatrice Rose, and so it's just like a family name that's always been in my. And, and then my grandma was a florist, and she passed away, and so there was just all this stuff and. No one could remember my last name. And I wanted to do something to kind of honor all these people that were gone in my life. And then my, my niece, um, who was just born, was such a blessing. But I thought it was just like a cool family name to, to kind of keep going, I guess. You know? And you actually wrote a song about that, correct? Little Sister? That's, a, that's about your yep. sister, correct? One of the things that I really like about that song is that's one that I always find myself listening to and not knowing like the meaning behind it until I kind of started doing a little bit of research is I, I don't have any sisters, but I do have a, uh, you know, a sister-in-law who I always just kind of like think about that song and how it relates to her. And, you know, obviously she didn't pass away, but there's just so much meaning in that where you're able to just kind of say, hey, you know, this is, I hope that you're doing well. And can you kind of talk about that song a little bit? Was that tough to write? Um, yeah, again, it was just another song that was new medicine. And that was another song that, um, just, I got in the room and it was like, what do you want to talk about? And then I just said, well, man, I, I have, a, my, I don't know if you guys know this, but my, I was telling my co writers my sister passed away and I just always think about her. And I just wonder, I wonder what she's thinking about. I wonder what she'd be like today if she was here. Like, I remember thinking at the time she would have been 18 or something. And I thought, cause she's only a little bit younger than me. And uh, I'm just thinking what kind of person she'd be. I wonder what she'd be like now. And and I think about her. You know what I mean? It's just uh, it's a crazy thing that she's not around. But I still think about her and I wonder what could have been and all that stuff. And so that's how that song started. But, um, yeah, it was just kind of the thought of I'm thinking about you. You know, it keeps me up at night sometimes to think about what would she be like and how would my life be different? How would if she have influenced me because my older sister definitely influenced me and my younger brother influenced me to play guitar because he got a guitar first and i don't think i would have had a younger brother if if jocelyn my sister wouldn't have died so there's all this stuff going on in my head but anyways little sister became a very um, popular song with my band medicine i think people just again related to not my exact story but they had their own version of it and they just put their own story into it if it's their brother their sister their cousin whoever's not here and they're missing them and they're thinking about them. And I remember when we toured with Avenged Seven, it was a full circle moment because Dan and I, my guitar player, had seen them in high school. We flew to LA to go look at colleges or something out there. We were going to go to music school out there, <laughs> but that didn't work out. But anyways, we were out there and we saw, we saw them in the audience. And we said, dude, we got to start a band and we got to do that. And we saw them at a show and then ended up, Five years later, here we are in an arena opening for them. And I remember Sinister Gates, guitar player, he came over and to our dressing room and knocked and was like, dude, I love Little Sister. How do you play that lick at the beginning? And I just thought, holy crap, dude, this guy's asking me how to play my song. I'm opening for his band. And I just remember going to see him and bought a ticket to their show. And so full circle. And it was that song and it meant something to him too. And that was really cool. So, Yeah, and that's what like we talked about, I think that that's the great thing is that there's so much meaningful stuff out of it. And I think, you know, a lot of times with writers, I know that you write for other people, but there's country artists and, and there's artists that I sit there and I listen to their music and I think, is this really meaningful to them? And I, I always got that feeling that this always had something to do with your life and it came from you. That's what I really like about your music. And I think if people listen to that, they're going to have a pretty good idea of who you are. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I just keep telling stories and sometimes it wears me out because I'm like, I don't really want to dig in there. Just sometimes it's just one of those things where you're like, I don't know if I really want to go there again. Right. You're like, I don't But I recently wrote a song that I remember kind of it's going to come out this year for Jake Rose and it's called Kinda. And it was like, I didn't really think about it at the time, but I was subconsciously writing about a night that happened years ago with an ex 
where I ran, we had just broken up. She cheated on me. I ran into her at a bar. We were looking at each other across the bar like, I hate you. Like, ah. And it was just like the worst night. But I subconsciously kind of just put that in the song. I realized, oh, I was writing about that. Like, it was just, it was like, even when I'm not even trying, sometimes it just ends up in the song. But those songs end up being the best. You know what I mean? They end up being, people can hear it. They can hear authentic. And so I, if I'm ever trying to pander too much and think, I should try to write something for the radio. It's like, you know, people want to just hear what's honest, you know? And that's what I like about it. Like I said, I've, uh, you know, I can't say that enough because I think that there's just, you're not writing for the radio. You're writing for yourself. There's so much of you in it that it just, uh, you know, it just, people can feel that. And I, hopefully my listeners will kind of check that out and listen to what you're doing. I want to talk a little bit about your country career because that's really what's going on right now, right? I mean, we've talked a lot about mm -hmm. new medicine. We've bounced back and forth between, you know, your country career and stuff like that. What's going on now? When are you going to uh, put uh, more than a little out there? Because that's one of my favorite songs that I've seen on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, we're going to drop that this year at some point. And we have a bunch of music kind of lined up. Obviously, the pandemic kind of threw everything off. And... um it was just kind of like we had all these plans to tour on my last. I put out a, an EP, Tractor Town, and had three or four songs on there we put out last year. And then it was just kind of like we weren't sure what we were doing. And and um, I was behind the scenes, like, you know, making sure the recordings were sounded like what I wanted them to sound like and making sure the production matched what I felt the vibe was. But um, I've been just so busy this year. I just dove into writing, and I ended up writing so many songs this year. And so I have a whole new batch of songs, more than little's on there. I got one called Kinda. I got one called I Could Go On. Um, some just, and, and, and look, I, I write for other artists and sometimes they don't pick, it's the same thing with record labels, right? Where you, it's a, like I told you, it's a business of rejection. And so I send songs to people. And I remember there was a song this year that got sent to, I'm not calling anybody out. I love all these people, but <laughs> they're representatives. So it's not right. them, but like, one of Rascal Flatts' label was like, we want this song for them for sure. They love that song. That's a hit. Well, never. they never ended up recording it. Then the same song, it was like, Lee Bryce, oh man, that sounds like a hit. I kind of want to record that. Is that song available? Never ended up recording it. There's just a bunch of big artists that were trying to record one of my songs. And I thought, heck, I'm not giving this song away. I'm just going to put it out myself because everyone thinks it's a hit. I'm going to put it out myself. I'd rather have a hit on myself than, you know, someone else. And um, so I have... I've taken some songs back that I felt, man, that's a great song. And I want to put that out. And, um, you're going to be hearing a lot. Of, I actually have a new song coming out. Not, it's not actually my song. I'm doing a cover coming out this Friday that I just kind of felt inspired. Um, Times Like These, which is Foo Fighters. Oh, yeah. And I just did a cover of it. And I did my version of it, acoustic, which just sounds country. And But it was just a lyric I felt was kind of timely. I feel like people are like biting each other's heads off on social media. And I'm just like, Man, everybody just needs to calm down and and uh, you know remember that we're all we're all friends here, you know, kind of thing. But um, so I have that coming out next Friday. But I have a bunch of releases planned, and um, I've just been really lucky this year with with my writing. I think I really just hit a, a stride. I've never I've never been on such a creative high where I felt like, man, I'm hitting on all cylinders now, and I really and that's helped me get cuts. I've been writing with. Um, Brian Kelly from Florida Georgia Line. He has a solo project coming out, and I have a bunch of songs I wrote with him for that, and co-produced. And so it's just been a really great year, man. And I'm I'm excited for this year coming up. I'm like, no matter what, pandemic or not, I'm dropping music all the time this year. So you're gonna hear a lot of new stuff. Yeah, and that's what I like. You know, the nice thing about it, it's kind of weird. It's you know, growing up, you always listen and you're waiting for that that whole album to drop, like you know, 13, 14 songs, and and you, and you kind of are doing a great job of just kind of teasing them, giving them one here and there. And then you drop a new medicine song, which die trying. I just, I, I that was on my, in my truck. Cause I, I'm a, during the day, I'm a window covering salesman, but I'm listening to that all yep. day long. It's like, this is what's driving me. It's that driving force mm -hmm. that you just put out there with die trying, but then all your other songs, even, you know, tractor town sleeves, a Kana line, which is funny because yep. listening to a Kana line just kind of reminds me of you always talk about riding around in the van and, and it's the truth. It's like, this is really it's what I've, absolutely. this is what I've <laughs> been through. So absolutely. So you're going to put a song out, you said next week sometime. And then you, do you have like a, a little bit big, like an EP coming out or anything like that? Or is it just going to be kind of one here and there for a while? 
Well, it's it's interesting. I'm not I, I'm not exactly sure because there's just so much. There's so many irons in the fire right now. It's this whole thing. It's this. I'm kind of feel like I'm I'm back in the same position I was with my band back in the day, which is like all these record labels keep saying they want to sign me, but no one's bit yet. And I'm like, should I just put this stuff out? And then someone's like, no, they want to sign you over here this whole lot. Don't put that out yet because they want to put it on their label. And then I'm like trying to get a deal to happen. And and I found when I've had the most success is when I stop listening and stop caring and just do what I want. I'm like, I love this song. I'm putting it out. And so I'm doing that next week. And I have all these new songs. And if no one wants to put them on, on a label, then that's their loss. I'm just going to put them on my own. I mean, I have a production label, um, Starts With Music, um, these two producers I work with. And we do have worldwide distribution and all that. Obviously, with the internet, it's it's great. And we have relationships at radio and stuff. So the songs get some places. But to have a, a big major label on board would be awesome. But I'm not going to stop. You know what I mean? I'm not going to. I'm not going to wait around for it because that's always been never worked for me. Every time I've stopped and said, okay, let me just wait for someone else and see, let me tell you, let me uh, try to listen to what they think I should do. And I'm like, no, I just need to know what I should do is this song sounds like me. I'm going to put it out. And what's been so cool about Spotify and the, you know, you can, there, there's arguments yay or nay for it. You know, as a songwriter, they could pay us a lot more. That's for sure. But as an artist, a platform to put music out has been so powerful. And uh, you look at New Medicine has 450,000 monthly listeners now, I think. That's grown from four or five years ago. It was at 60,000 listeners. So, I mean, it's like, you know, five, six times as many people as we're listening to our band as they are now. And, and I don't have to have a label to put it out. I can just put it out. And I have a song coming out with Adelita's Way. And it's a collaboration. It's New Medicine and Way Together. And um, it's called Own It. And that's coming out. We're going to pick a date here soon. I think it's probably going to be February, maybe early March. But um, I'm excited about it, man. I got I got Jake Rose songs coming out. I got New Medicine songs coming out. And, you know, Rick and I from Adelita's Way, we just decided, like, hey, people are so, you know, in the business that's just like a competition, right? It's like, ah, my song's bigger than yours or my band's better than your band. And me and Rick are collaborators and we see the beauty in each of our projects and our fan bases. And we thought, why don't we collaborate, dude? Let's put a song out together. No one's doing that. You know, we're not enemies. We're, we're friends. We love each other's bands and we respect each other and let's put a song out together. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. And we spend a lot of time trying to, you know, define that like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to wait because I'm going to get this or I'm going to get that. I'm going to get more money for it or whatever. But really, if you don't put it out there, you're never going to get anything for it. So that's yeah, a great hundred percent. It's even like a podcast like this or, or social media. Like I sometimes will be like, I don't want to post. I don't have that many, you know, followers or, well, you're not going to have any, if you don't post anything. And if you just keep your cards in here and no one sees them ever, it's like, uh, I feel like it's an old school general and there's, there's something to be organized for sure. But at some point you have to jump in the water and just start swimming. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. uh, I've always found I've had more success when I just do it. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't know how I'm going to make this work, but I'm going to make it work. Let's go. You know? Well, it's been really great talking to you. I mean, it's it's awesome to hear kind of your process, how you work through things. You know, I'm glad to hear that there's new music coming out. I really appreciate you taking the time. Um, is there anything that you want to say to anyone who might be kind of aspiring to be a music artist or trying to get, you know, get started in that in that process? Yeah, I'll try to keep it as short as I can. I mean, number one, don't give up. And I, that's so cheesy, but it's like, you know, I just see the most, I see so many talented people just quit because it's hard and it is hard. And you're going to get no. And people are going to tell you, people are going to reject you and say, nope, I don't think you're good enough. But as long as you believe you're good enough, you know, uh, you got to just keep at it. And I think a big thing for me has been able to take constructive criticism, right? Like. I would just be like, okay, well, then what do I need to do to get better? Because if I go to a record label and they said, nah, we're going to pass. And I was like, well, why'd you pass? Well, your songs weren't good enough. Okay, well, I better get better at writing songs. And then I would listen to people and learn how to write better songs. And then I'd bring those songs in. Okay, now your songs are good, but you got to get your band better live. Okay, well, then I'd go back. And taking constructive criticism, not taking it as you suck. It's just more like, here's what I think you could do to get better and 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 and, and work on all that stuff. But yeah, like I said, the biggest thing for me is persistence and hard work and uh, being able to 
take rejection, take constructive criticism, but then make, make yourself better for it. You know, I've failed so many times, but they're all lessons. And I'm like, now where I'm at now, I just don't make those same mistakes anymore. And I've just grown so much because of that. And so that's what I would say to um, young artists. Yeah. And it's always taking that chance to learn as a learning, you know, a learning moment instead of just, you know, just willing to just kind of give up. Like you said, I think that we had that, we have that mentality and it's kind of going away. I feel like it started out where everyone gets a trophy and then you don't get your trophy and you're not a success because you didn't get your trophy right now. We're now we're right. circling back to the fact that we have to be willing to work hard. We have to be willing to put ourselves out there. And if we don't, then we're not going to, we're not going to be successful. So I do have one Absolutely. last question that I ask every single guest. Um, well, actually, before we get to that, because I'm going to ask you that, but where, where can we find you? I know you've got a couple different places. It seems like you're on all social media. Can you tell us where we can follow you, where we can see when your new music is coming out and, and all that stuff? Absolutely. All my music is available on Apple, Spotify. Um, and so Jake Rose is all my country stuff. And then New Medicine is all the rock stuff on social media. All my personal and my Jake Rose stuff is Jake Rose. And then on Facebook, uh, Jake Rose Music, Twitter, Jake Rose Music. And then you can find New Medicine at New Medicine Rock on uh, Instagram. And then just New Medicine on Facebook and Twitter. And so I'm, I'm, on, the, I'm on both of those. There's going to be songs coming out on both of those um, projects this year. And so check, me, check them all out. Yeah, I'm really excited to hear those. You know, I mean, like I said, I've been a fan for a while and it's, it's great to actually get to talk to you. You know, I've reached out to you a couple of times and I know how it is. I know you're a busy guy. And so I appreciate mm -hmm. you taking the time to be on here. But that last question that we have, the show is called Shaping Success. And, you know, we ask this, every single guest the same question. And that question is, is how do you define success? If you had to say, this is what success looked like for Jake Rose, what would that be? Hmm. Um... That's a great question. For me, qu trying to quantify it with, um, some people would say, oh, number one song is, is not, now I've made it. That's just like a number on a page. I'd say the biggest definition for success for me, um, personally, which I think I've realized in the last couple of years, um, a few years ago, I started realizing, man, I'm paying the bills, doing what I love. I've already won. Do I have the number one song on the radio this month? No. But am I making a great living? You know, I have a house, I have a car, you know, I've, I've, you know, I got a new truck. I got, I get to create songs every day, which is what I, as a kid, dreamed of. Um, I'm working in this space, doing my dream job. I wake up every day and I can write songs for a living. And so um, I guess, you know, creating a life where, I'm able to do what I love for a living. That's the win right there. Now I always want to, I'm always reaching for another goal, but I've already feel like I won. And I mean, I'm already feel like, wow, I have to take stock of, I've made it this far. Most people never will get to where I've, I've been. I've played arenas. I've done this and I'm making a living doing music. And, um, does it look like I thought it would when I was 13? No, but is it pretty awesome? Yeah. So that's it. And I don't think that you'll ever quit. I mean, I just talking oh, to you, no. you just kind of get that feeling that even though you feel like you've, you've made that, I, I think there's more to it. And I, and I oh, think yeah. that that's an awesome way to look at it though, that you're making money doing something that you love. So mm -hmm. I, I look forward to hearing more of your music. And uh, I wanted to say again, thank you for taking the time to be on here. I really appreciate you. You know, I know you're busy. Oh no, I appreciate you having me Wes and, and thank you so much. And, uh, Thanks to all your listeners. Appreciate yeah. you. All right, Jake. Well, awesome. hey, this is the end of the show. I wanted to say thank you to everyone for tuning in. Again, please share this if you're seeing this on Facebook Live. Do a watch party if you're watching it later on. Uh, help me to grow the show. Help us get some great reviews. If you have questions and want to be a guest on the show, it'd be awesome to hear from you. Until next time, I challenge you to find the shape of your success. my studio up but no, they don't care <laughs> they want to <laughs> they want to see the workspace yeah this is the this is the war room yeah so will we be able to watch this afterwards 
Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll link it and then I can send you over the link too for the, cause this is going on, on TV PBN, which is my producer. It's going on their website, but then it'll be on my Facebook page and I'll just shoot you over the link on that so that they can find it. Okay. Perfect. And, yeah. and uh, I'll but then it. I'm also going to upload it to my podcast platform too. So, okay, great. I'm a little oversharer. I don't know if you've noticed that yet, but no, that's good, man. I like it. I mean, you have to, you have to push this stuff out and more yeah. content is good. I actually saw a lot of people listen to that one. I, did, I actually did that podcast a few weeks ago, but um, it just aired this week or whatever. The, po- yeah. the, the hook one, but yeah, it was. People good liked it. People were like, "Oh, look, hearing it, hearing you on a podcast, that's cool." Yep. Okay, are we ready this time for real? All right, roll it. <laughs> oh, it's still rolling. It's what? Going the whole time. Oh well, the whole forty. You. We're already going. Yeah, we're going. You didn't do yeah, the mine intro. Mine says thirty-six. After? Oh, we'll see it. Mine says 34, 33, yeah, 31. Yeah. He's, he's just, he, so it's uh, rolling. So he, they, people hear us talking. He's uh, just, gotcha. He's, uh, <laughs> he says he's ruining my reputation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> These nerds. That's it's an evil plot. These nerds. I knew it. Do it. <laughs> Couldn't be trusted. <laughs> 10, mm-hmm. 9, 8, 7, 6. Five, Here we go. Four, three, start your engine.